back to episode two of Emergency Intercom. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. This set looks nice. It's 80 degrees inside. We're really sweaty today. Um, yeah, we've realized um, the hell we trapped ourselves in by starting hosting... this in the summer <laughs> yeah. in our fucking dungeon. Kitchen. In our kitchen dungeon, the hottest room in the house. Uh, absolute Actually, hell. Actually, literally the hottest rooms in the house in the summer are you and Josh's. Yeah, room. it's terrible because I have all those windows. It's so bad, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I actually like living in heat. I am like a warm body person by nature. I I would rather be hot than cold. I agree with that because when I was at the beach yesterday, um, I went to the beach alone for the first time yesterday because I decided I would like to start doing things alone because I'm very dependent in being around others because I get a lot like really scared of being alone. Anyways, um, when I was at the beach, I, it, I was cold and I was like, dude, Miami, I like cannot wait to be back in Miami heat on the beach because mm. like the point of being at the beach is to be literally drowning in heat. Yeah, you want to be like hot. sweating. You yeah. want to be sweating so you can get in the water and cool down. Of course. And then do that a million times. Does anybody else think that just like Miami heat hits different? No, oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> I think it just hits different. The basketball team. Literally me in middle school acting like I gave a fuck about basketball because the boy I liked was really into basketball and the Miami Heat was in the finals. And I was like, oh my God. Yes. Name yeah. five players on Miami Heat, the starting five. I can name five players that used to be on there. Or I can name the three. LeBron, uh, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. That was like the... They were like the, the big superpower. Deal. Yeah, yeah. They were literally like, NBA has superpower teams. We don't have to talk about it because I will go in. It's a special yeah, no, interest no of mine. No sports. No sports. Um, um, but what we should talk about is my fucked up sleeping schedule. Yes. And we kind of lightly touched on this in the last episode about how like me and Drew switch off with our mental health. So this past week I've been spiraling. Literally spiraling. It's like, it's traumatizing to 2018 almost, where I'm like. This bitch is teetering on like a full blown depressive episode, and we need to save her. We I know, need to literally. save Summer. It, dude, that is the scariest. Oh my god, we, <laughs> we need, need to, to save, save summer. summer. We need to get you help. Um, so for context to that, in 2018, I was in genuine one of the worst depressive episode of my life. It, it dragged on into early 2019. It was terrifying to be around. It was terrifying to witness. It hurt all of my friendships and relationships. <laughs> yeah. um, it literally was destroying me and everything around me. But yep. um, one of the like key signs of it starting was like my sleeping schedule just got obliterated because I had no bo motivation to like get up and get out of bed or do anything. And then like I was too sad to like eat. So then like basically what happens to me is I'll stay up till like the fucking ass crack of dawn. Just... Literally 7 a.m. Yeah, like. No, you were going to sleep at like 3 a.m., but sleeping until 6 p.m. Yeah. You were just sleeping. Like, I know, but, so much. but in 2018, it got to the point that I would stay up till like 6, 7, oh. and then I would sleep all day. Yeah. But it, it's slowly been getting there because like I slept at 3 a.m. and then woke up at 3 p.m. That's 12 hours of sleep. And, um, I, and I'm like in the background doing my little task, like just trying to wake up India in the morning and she like, she just doesn't. And I, I, I tried to like give her my advice, what I did to get my sleeping schedule back on check was putting my phone on the other side of the room with an alarm set. Um, and it just forces you out of bed. Like It did do that today. Yeah, it just I forces you to get up. I did sleep 20 extra minutes, but it did help me get up. Yeah. But yeah, my sleeping schedule just goes to shit. And then like, because I wake up so late, I'm like, I don't know what to have for breakfast. I don't even want a coffee. It's so late in the day. I don't want a coffee. And then like, I even lose my appetite for coffee. And that is a key sign that That's something is fucking scary. wrong with me. If I don't want a coffee. That's scary. Like, and is literally the girl like, don't talk to me before my coffee. <laughs> literally. If she doesn't have her coffee, like. Don't talk to me. <laughs> At all all day um so yeah so we've just been like talking about that recently and literally how s your sleep schedule fully does coincide with your mental health as as well as like i hate to say it but like Physical. fitness yeah and gut health like that dude. shit <laughs> that, like dude, it sounds so annoying but i genuinely <laughs> this is like a, the propaganda that, of fitness and gut health yeah the propaganda is kind of true i don't it's know if real. it's propaganda it's real because like i was saying like i kept i keep thinking about last year and like dude i was in such a good spot mentally but like my sleeping schedule was awesome i was sleeping at latest like 2 a.m but then waking up at like 
9 30 10 a.m every day which yeah. i know some people are like that's late but 9 30 10 30 a.m is my favorite waking up time because if i have too much time i was the about day, to say it will treat me the opposite and i will also smile. yeah like waking us waking up at like 9 10 is like the 6 a.m 7 a.m for the regular girlies because like when you have nothing to do all day, especially in a pandemic, like filling the time, it, it's impossible. Yeah, Literally, it's, you just go insane. And that's why screen time, back to that, is so high because there's just <laughs> nothing, nothing to, to do. do. But yeah, and like, I want to like start riding my bike again because it felt so free. I just felt like a free girl listening to Cop by Florence and the Machine riding my bike, just like mm-hmm. living my life. Yeah, I want to start working out. I want to get get active again. We, I want to do hot Pilates again because that shit was that legitimately so life-changing. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but like, that is the hardest I've ever worked out in my entire life. Like, that Dude, is the that hardest not workout. Crazy. It literally is insane. People like... I, even me, when I used to think of Pilates and yoga, I was like, dude, that shit's such like, whack. that shit is so whack. Like it's you're not doing shit. anything. Yeah. But then when you're in that class, especially in a hot class, it is insane how intense those workouts get. Yeah, Pilates it, is like a very intense form of workout. Yeah, and then also on top of that, the humidity in those rooms is like f- fucking 70%. And then you're also breathing in everybody else's sweat humidity, <laughs> which is disgusting. Like. It's absolutely <laughs> that's disgusting. That, that was the first thing to go for COVID. <laughs> yep. They were like, yep. fuck that hot Pilates literally, shit. Yeah, literally. But I was just thinking, we should just do hot Pilates in our kitchen in the daytime because it's literally fucking 83 degrees Dude, in here. that was one of the best parts about working out last year is like the house would be so fucking hot and mm-hmm. I would literally just come in and like from the adren- adrenaline of riding my bike, I would come inside and like work out and then I would feel fucking awesome and take like a cool shower and it was like, which also like this is probably a hot take but it's just my personal experience with my like body dysmorphia it doesn't like i do not work out with the intent of looking good or like anything like that because yeah i don't i don't ever have that intent for me like working out is literally as someone who also struggles with like Aggress- no, I don't. I don't have aggression issues. I don't want to. Put you that are out there. aggressive. But yeah, I I can get very like heated up and upset, and like that physical like release is very good for my brain chemistry. I was about to say for me, it's like it's not about looking a certain way because I like the way I look. It's purely about like releasing those feel good chemicals in my brain and making yeah. me feel good. And also like the neurotic part of me is like, if I miss a day it'll fuck me up and then it just keeps me on schedule and then I'm just like slowly getting healthier That's why it's so hard to get back into it because yeah. like you know once you do it's like a commitment yeah. you have to like stay Our there. Our addictive personalities <laughs> I know. Fully, <laughs> fully dive in. Oh but what I was saying is it helps my body dysmorphia like when we did those hot Pilates classes I was like in a very bad state with my like body image in like late 2019 and we just did one class and I felt so good about myself because it just felt good to like use my body for like kind of what it's made for to like move yes. and just that alone i felt like very secure because i was like dude i could go and like work out if i wanted and like that alone made me feel like hot as fuck i was like hey girl i'm strong as <laughs> i'm shit. working out I, I could carry it um a five pound weight in this hand <laughs> girl like, she can lift up a one gallon jug of milk on her own like with one arm i could carry a gallon of milk up the stairs that is one of the most embarrassing things to me is like actually like if you set a milk jug in front of me and was like, take your left arm and lift it up, it's actually a struggle for me. That's how weak I am. <laughs> like, it's literally like, I can't do it. <laughs> that is not something you tell the public. But also, that just co-aligns. Like, I need, I, I also do partly like, want to get like super fucking ripped because like how funny would that be is if one day i just like take off my shirt on instagram and i am literally like built like a god i'm not kidding that's gross i have like the perfect genetics for it like i have i have the oh, broad right. shoulders i, I know the what you're good. talking about because i also like i will say again i do, i just want to like clarify me and drew are not like workout junkies because no. we're like we want to be sexy i don't give a fuck i feel sexy in the most odd <laughs> moments like i don't give a fuck like working out will make me feel good i don't think anyone needs to work out to be sexy but 
I will say <laughs> when I was working out, I am one of those dumb bitches that if I worked out for two weeks, I would like, you saw it when I was working out last summer and I randomly like started to you get just, abs and yeah. I was like, ew. And you would like kind of show them off a little bit sometimes, but like. Cause I was, cause I was so, oh, cause you were in Texas and Josh was in OC. So I was just so alone. And I was like, literally no one's seeing me get ripped as shit for no reason. <laughs> like, which again, I don't care, but it was just such a funny point in my life. Cause I've never worked out before then. Yeah. Um, but also what you eat does affect you. And I, yeah. I fully Ugh. believe that. Literally, I like, people <laughs> told me that my entire life. They were always like, what you put in your body really does matter. Like it matters. And I was like, I don't fucking care. Like I'm going to eat this chicken nugget. Like I don't give a shit. But now that I'm like older, I'm like, and I've, <laughs> I've given it a second thought. I'm like, wait, like that's what our body runs on. Like what we put into it is what our body runs on. I mean, it hasn't changed shit. I still eat a bag of fucking Takis a day and drink three flat sodas, Dude, but like it doesn't. Eating is so gross. I called him a garbage disposal the other day. It's and the realest it shit. Stuck. It is so It's true. the realest shit. Like if people leave their leftovers around me or like whatever it is, I'll just pick it up and eat it. I don't give a shit, but it is kind of good for me because if I didn't do that, I would literally only eat once a day. Like. I don't know what it is about me. No, it, it's literally, me and Drew have the worst habit where like we rarely have something we want to eat. Like I'm not somebody oh, who so like- It's so hard I to have, decide. Yeah, dude, I get such decision anxiety about food if I'm like ordering off an app or something that I will literally stare at my options like for an hour and then the hour goes by. And then it's and too late. Yeah, and now it's nine o'clock and all like the better options for food are closed and then I'm like, fuck, do I have to eat Taco Bell at like 10 p.m. right now? And we do, and we time-lapse And time then I it. fucking feel like shit um, yeah. sometimes. But, Taco Bell is good as fuck, but I thrive off of having groceries. Yeah, I was about to say, like, uh, you're, you've are you been really good this past like year, two years of just like cooking, like you cook all the time. And don't make it, I don't be on my like Bon Appetit shit where I'm cooking a bunch of different shit. Like I cook she, she the cooks same. She cooks bean soup and eggs, I, period. I eat bean soup or like vegan tortilla soup without the tortillas. It's good as fuck, don't get me wrong. Um, Or I eat salmon and a stir fry or eggs and granola. Like those are like the things, or a tuna sandwich. Those are like the six things I put in rotation and like, are super easy to make for me and I know how to make them down to the T and it's like clockwork yeah. and I can eat the same thing every single day. But I do have to be careful because I am this close to mercury. I was poisoning. about to say, I was literally, that's why I was laughing because I was like, this bitch literally only eats fish and it's like actually concerning because who, who was that actor? I don't remember who it was, but literally like died of mercury poisoning from eating too much fish. Um, me next. Yes, and is the that next. That would be literally so fucking embarrassing if that I would, died that's like, <laughs> And it wouldn't even be funny. It would just be like, it'd just be, it'd like, be like, damn. Damn, like, really? It's like, that? <laughs> like for real? Is like, that easy? That's how you're gonna die? Like, I, like, if I am not eating in, I will eat sushi. And if I'm eating in, I will have fish. And that is like really bad. And I know I shouldn't do it. I did get stuff to make other things like, again last summer i was making these really weird like tofu tacos and like don't get it twisted they were not fucking juicy and delicious it was they are delicious to me but it's like pico de gallo like roasted or like grilled corn beans and tofu like that's what i was eating and like it doesn't sound that good but like you know and, if you and put, your like, limon yeast and sal in anything it's good yeah. so like and it's good. And you would also add your yeast seasoning. I, I literally add my nutritional yeast to everything. I hate that. Like, it just looks and sounds disgusting. I know it's really good for you and it actually tastes really fucking good. But like, don't call it that. Like, call it literally <laughs> anything else. Like, I don't want to eat yeast infection. It's I not mean, sometimes, yeast infection. sometimes you have to eat yeast infection. Jill! Oh, I can't even say the name, but I know someone who said that one time they ingested. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> no, that literally actually made me nauseous, and I'm like, no one talks oh. about vaginal health enough publicly. Like, no one talks about. We actually, did have that conversation recently. Like, yeah, where so there was a TikTok where someone, like, was showing the difference between normal discharge and then like, a, a yeast infection. But I also do think like, where did she get the yeast from? That's what I want to know. <laughs> where did she get that infection from? It looked too real. <laughs> Oh, no, the discharge looked really yeah, real. Yeah, the yeast infection discharge, same thing. 
to me to me <laughs> Dude, the thing is like no one talks about it but also i do think like vaginal health is so intuitive because like you see them underwear every single day so you know damn well if like what's that skin mark <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm if sorry. That tubby custard is looking a little Ugh. different. <laughs> Do not call it that ever, ever, ever again. That's what they taught us on Teletubbies. <laughs> that's, oh, that's what tubby custard is. It's yeah. discharged. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, if that tubby custard comes out looking a little more opaque than usual. Ooh, it's stinky like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Even though yeast infections have no smell, and that's what makes them like kind of scary, is like. The tubby custard looks a little different, but it's not smelling quite like uh, anything. I'm literally, I'm literally like, I mean, penis, <laughs> men don't talk about penis health enough. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Y'all are so gross. Literally, there's no going back. Literally, like, there's no like, recovery. Like, please just wash it. <laughs> That's what there is. Just, like, just clean it with your soap. Please just take a shower. I saw a TikTok that it was like, um, it was like, you know the audio that it's like, um, fuck, it was like, Oh, or what song is it? It's like, I remember when I lost my mind. I remember when. Or no, it's not that song. There's a song that it's like... <laughs> there is a song that's going viral on TikTok that it was like, I've become a fool or something. But it was like when I... Um, when I caught myself for like the seventh time arguing with him to take a shower. Or like that's when like, I knew it was time to go. Yeah, that's when I knew it was time to go. <laughs> the first time was a red flag. Dude, oh, men's health is awesome. Um, lack thereof. Lack thereof. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, th there was this. There was this course online recently. I mean, it's always been online about like washing your legs, like in the yeah. shower. Do you like, like, go down and I, wash your legs? Not every single time I shower, but like three times a week, I'll give like my legs a really good scrub and my toes a little. Yeah. Really ever good since, scrub. like, literally. Ever since like Twitter like made fun of men for not washing their ass and just washing their body in general, like every time I shower, it's like trauma for me. Every time I shower, I get every inch of my body like really, really gnarly because I'm like, I don't want to stink. Like I don't want to be one of those dudes that just like have a smell. In my head, like, okay, and this is going to be a hot take because the internet cannot understand anyone's hygiene preferences or it's not even hygiene preferences like there are studies about like yeah you shouldn't wash your body every single day mm -hmm. and also over exfoliating is bad for you and washing your body is a form of exfoliating especially yeah. if your ass is using a loofah because sometimes especially if i'm like home all day i'll be like bitch i'm not showering like Dude, it feels the remember, oils my body is making feels good remember like, when like you used to be really crazy about showering and you would literally shower like three times a day and when i told you that i was like cool down maybe like then maybe that's what's like causing you to break out like just like relax a little like maybe go a day or two without showering Dude, but like that's also that stems from like my my minor like germophobia yeah. of like okay after i use the bathroom i have to wash my hand like three times because i wash it and then i went to go touch the door handle but the door handle is probably dirty because someone just touched that so then i have to go wash my hands again i, I do wipe my ass on the toilet i mean on the uh, <laughs> the door handle i do i do uh, like i'm not joking but i used to i used to also not let anyone sit on my sheets yeah. like i used to not let anyone sit on my bed not even myself especially in high school it was such a big issue in high school i would like shower in the morning shower at night i wouldn't let anyone sit on my bed because I didn't want the outside stinky world to touch my sheets. I would come home from school exhausted as fuck and every single teenager gets home from school and like lounges in their bed and I would sit on the floor next to my bed. I was about to say, I, sl I sit on my floor but not because I'm scared of getting outside clothes on my no, bed. No, I did it because I was so terrified of my bed getting dirty. Literally like coming home after a long day out or at school or whatever and just laying down on your floor like on the carpet just sprawled out is like one of the most magical moments you can have in your life point blank period i did like laying on the floor like we were talking about the other day i liked laying under my bed mm -hmm. yeah That's literally cool. i liked getting under it and being like compressed and just like literally i told you yesterday i was like i need someone like platonically <laughs> non-sexually just to lay on top of me i want to feel as that, a kid like, were you that kind of kid who like would have your siblings like sit on your yes, legs yes i was always being walked on or i would literally like put my legs under my sister like on purpose or like Dude, under my same. parents just so i could feel that like yeah the way compression it's like it sounds like we need a fucking anxiety <laughs> weighted blanket. I, I have my I'd weighted blanket. I'd be like, blanket. someone sit on me. Literally, I had the craziest like week of my life because I, I literally, I haven't told anyone this because it's kind of embarrassing, but like 
I strictly sleep with my weighted blanket on top of my comforter. I don't get under my comforter. I have my weighted blanket on top of me. And legitimately, I like had to withdraw from my weighted blanket. Like it was crazy. Like I, I wasn't able to sleep without it because I. Bro, you need to start because this house is about to get hot. I know shit. that's what I'm doing. Like that's what I'm. I'm trying to get rid of it because like, it's hot as fuck under there. But also, I like being hot and sweating. Hey, well, dude, that's that's the good thing about summer is like I can't stay in my bed all day. Like. It, it like hurts my brain to be in my bed because I get so hot because the sun beaming in my windows. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, ew. I, I am the kind of person, I can't lounge in bed like all day. Like I've tried it, but it feels too gross to me. Yeah, like, you're to, just like, like sitting there and like- And like getting clammy and like sweaty. Yeah. I'm like, ew, I don't want to fucking do that. Um, But that's our take on health. We're not doctors though. So don't <laughs> listen to absolutely anything. This is all from personal experience yeah. of two idiots. But- we can say get the vaccine go ahead and get the vaccine us being like get the hopefully when by the time this episode comes out we'll have our vaccine yeah. i know every influencer in the world is like yes i got my vaccine um again not that me and drew are anti-vaxxers we're just lazy we don't go anywhere <laughs> wait the amount of times we've said that on the <laughs> internet people are probably like wait are they anti-vaxxers i am an anti-vaxxer no i'm not an anti-vaxxer i just think everyone who needs the vaccine should get it before me and that's it like i don't want to take up vaccine space i know that's like a stupid take and i'll probably get in trouble for saying that but like literally just go and get it i'll get mine we stay inside all day anyways but when i do have the chance to get the johnson and johnson blood clot around that's what we fucking want. that's we i want, want that johnson shit i want the johnson oh my and God, johnson. we did talk about this in the last episode because we were talking about how someone we knew and we gave them a really good reaction, and I was like... Oh, see, I knew it. I knew we talked about it, because I was like, I had it in my notes, but I'm getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So now it's been two episodes that we still don't have the vaccine. I'm giving them a story. Giving them a and story I still, And I still do want to get it, but I don't know. I'm just like, again, not that I'm like... Not that you're what? Not that I'm anti-vaxxer. I'm just scared. Like, scared of can't what? Can't a girl be scared? Why? Not a single influence. You know how they're like, we need a pothead princess. We need an anti-vaxxer <laughs> influencer. <laughs> we, <laughs> we literally, there's a bunch of anti-vaxxers. There's so many of them. Not anti-vaxxer. We need a paranoid about dying from the vaccination influencer. Uh, an influencer who's going to get the vaccine. Like, I'm going to get it. By the time this episode comes out, I will have it. But... Can't we all just admit we're a little scared? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I'm why not... can't no one admit that? I think you're scared because you literally, like, are actually terrified of getting sick. I think it stems from, like, being afraid of throwing up at the end of the day. No, like, yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want to get sick. I also, like, if anybody is with me on this, I don't have health insurance. I've never had health insurance. I didn't come from a family who had the financial stability to be going to the doctor. Like, even when we were sick, it was like, bitch, we're going to Walgreens. We're not going to the doctor. Like- <laughs> We're going to eat dirt. Yeah, we're gonna go eat dirt and build your immune system yeah. like that. Like, we're not doing all that. So like, I, and I am not someone who like got, I, I got the vaccines I needed because, like, obviously to be in school, you need to get, like, certain vaccines. Mm -hmm. But, like, I can't remember the last time I got, like, a shot of any kind. Um, and I do, in general, I'm, I just have, like, a weird fear of doctors and stuff. Like, I talked about this in a video recently and, like, on live where I just have a fear. I think I just have bad luck and I'm, like, prone to getting, like, infection, sickness, and everything. Like, I, I swear in my mind, like... I want so many. No, we are fully. And stuff. We are fully. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hypochondriacs. Hypochondriacs. Hello. What's up, y'all? It is Anya and Drew from the future, and we're just here to say we're, we're vaccinated. vaccinated. Um, please do not take what we said as anti-vaccine <laughs> propaganda. We were just scared. We were scared little girls. Yeah, but we're vaccinated now. Go get your vaccines. This is vaccine propaganda. Um, this is pro-vaccine propaganda. Exactly. Go get them. Um, Go get that needle, girl. I did get Johnson & Johnson. I know. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Yeah. Or in the episode after the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Bye. Enjoy. <laughs> We are fully hypochondriacs. Um, I think I am literally always dying of something. Like, I just, like, I wish 
we were 20 years into the future where you could just lay under a machine once a year and it will just scan your body and tell you if you have cancer or not. And that's all I want. <laughs> I like there is. Literally, you just get your blood drawn and see if your fucking white cell count is high. But I don't want to get my blood drawn. Yeah. Also, the last time I went to a hospital and got a needle put in me, it was winter like 2019. I went to Miami and I get really bad like heart palpitations and like chest problems. Um, I was told that I just have like the muscles in my chest um, are easily inflamed. So then it literally feels like I'm having a heart attack sometimes and I, I actually need it. to get more medicine for it because it's coming back. Costrochondritis. Um, when I went to the hospital, they put, the lady went to go put in an IV. She was being a fucking cunt to me for no reason, but she went to go put in my IV and she accidentally just stabbed me and the IV didn't go in. And I just watched my vein squirt blood all over the table in the yes. floor. And I was just like, ah, ah, and I was like crying and I was like, I'm going to bleed out. <laughs> like I'm going to die. Um, you deserved it, Loki. And that would happen to me when I go get the vaccine. That literally won't happen. It'll be like two no, seconds. Zamar was saying it was literally the least painful shot he ever Zamar had. Zamar is like such a man man though. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Zamar is like He probably has a very he gives high me, pain tolerance. Zamar and Christian are the same kind of like boy man. Does yeah. that make sense? Like they're not super masculine or anything, but there's like just like I'm just a man. I'm just a dude. I'm just a guy. Do you need help with that? That's that's what they are. I could pick that up. Dude, I can climb that wall and unlock that door. Do you need me to pick that up or carry that? Are you are you all sure sure you don't need help and then they make everyone leave and they do it themselves and they're like, "It's okay." That was easy. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I am like figure it out. <laughs> like I mean, I'm pretty good about taking groceries up the stairs, though. Like, I go hard on groceries. Everyone I, it's like a little and game. And their mother goes hard. You it's do not like, go hard like me. Oh, bitch. Do you know how many times I brought up my groceries alone, like three bags each hand? But I'm Struggling. saying I'm saying when we go grocery shopping together. Oh, yeah, because if I have someone else who's going to pick up labor, I'm like, I'm not stressing. Yeah, I, but I go hard as fuck on taking the groceries upstairs. Um, but Literally it's like once, once a year. I was about to say to once that. every three months, <laughs> once every four months. And it's not your groceries. It's because. I, we were out and I was like, I'm stopping at the grocery store. And you were like, Mama, no. <laughs> Inya's literally that girl to me. Inya's literally your mom when she's like, Do you want to come? Uh, do you want to go to the store with me? And then you're like, Yeah, sure, I'll go. But like, please don't stop anywhere. And Inya's like, Do you care if I stop at like Starbucks? And I'm like, No. And then she's like, Wait, but I need to go get hair extensions. Like, can I go get hair extensions? And she's like, I'm like, Yes. I'm a hustle and bustle kind of bitch. I'm like, I'm out of the house. I can't go back home because if I go back home, that's the end of my day. Like, yeah. You don't start your car twice at your house. You start it once at your house a day. Interesting. And that's that's my motto. I'm like, Mama, please take me home. Please. <laughs> you stay in the car like a little dog. I know. I'm like on my fucking phone pouting. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm vibing inside. I want hair extensions again so bad. I should do that, actually. I'm going to do that today before we go. I'm going to break this on your fucking head. Why? Oh, my God. People, it's so funny that people with audio can't see us for things like that. So... There you Dude, go. people with only audio are like at, hit the lottery. Like people having to watch this is crazy. The thing is, I don't think people actually watch like visual. Like it's not like we're putting things on screen and doing little fun things. It's literally us sitting in a fucking dingy corner. Like why are you watching this? Whoa! I just did coke <laughs> on camera. Dude, I For the I, audio I, listeners. People are like, I knew it. I knew it. These <laughs> fucking druggies. We, we're we not like substance abusers, though. We've said this so many times, but people literally we have to clarify. Way, yeah, I know. Because people think because of the way we act like, no, bitch, I don't act like this for any other reason other than the fact that I have a lot of internalized trauma and I need attention. Like, <laughs> that is why I act the way I act. Yep. Yep, like period. that is why we act this way it's because yeah. we are the kids who were like we had to be funny for attention for but our survival parents, our parents thought it was rude so they weren't giving us yeah. the attention and also i was the last baby i was the boy madon was the pampered little girl i was twin um i had to raise myself and that was my form of communication with my parents was being a fucking clown <laughs> literally. literally same except my dad was just always working so i was like cool what fucking adult do i get attention from now bitch who the fuck is gonna pay attention to me and then me and my siblings would literally just fight each other to death yeah. we were insane kids are fucking dude nobody i don't talks know how about, we survived nobody talks about when you grow up with a bunch of siblings yep. with no parent supervision 
bitch fist fight on fist fight on fist yeah you beat the shit out of each other like like I feel like kids growing up now, they have TikTok and they like understand that like violence is not the key and that they're like unlocking the third eye. Like the No, violence is the key. And <laughs> I think we need to bring back violence. And we need to bring back. I am tired of people calling me annoying and talking shit about me hit on them. the internet. I am going to hit you. Like I am done. The way I was raised is if you would like to talk shit, you do not talk shit unless you are going to back it up with getting hit getting in the fucking, fucking mouth. hit in the face yeah like, getting popped in the mouth yep. and if and, and i i want so badly like this has been my worst although the past year i've had so much growth and yep. like clarity in myself the weirdest like backfire rage. of it all of it is like i've also contained this extreme rage where i can't stand people my age talking shit about me online because i'm like listen we're two adults we're gonna fight like which is the <laughs> that's opposite. Not, that's I don't know not that's not right. where that goes. It's we're two adults, we can talk about this. I'm like, no, bitch, we're two adults and I can hit you in the fucking face. You can go post about it and be like, and you just hit me, and I'm gonna post on my story and be like, yup, yup I fucking did, bitch. Yup. And if anybody else wants to get hit, let me know. Yeah, and I think we what we could do to get that rage out, because I feel like you just need like one like physical alteration with someone. I think like you need to get hit, you need to hit someone. We should box. <laughs> I would beat the fuck out of you. You <laughs> would beat the shit out of me, like period. But I think like I could get a couple swings in. I have like long arms, like I could get you. <laughs> like, dude, you said you went. I could get a couple swings. In. Like that's the way you delivered it. No, we should box. If y'all want to see us box, like <laughs> we'll let us know. We'll do some pay per view. Uh, John Paul or whatever. Jake Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Paul, um, Bryce Hall, little Bri- action, a little action. Bryce Hall, this is a call out post. I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna beat your I ass. I want to get in the ring with Bryce Hall. That would be fucking fun. But yeah, I all like all the Bryce Hall stories. We should tell one day. I know we'll give them, dude. We we just have such an insane amount of stories, and like, I would lo- I want to get into all of them at some yeah, point. We just but have like, to remember them. Yeah, and we can also just start off a little soft, and then we could get into like the. The juice, the, the, the drama of it all. Like, also the stories we have are just fucking funny because like, we're just trolls by nature and we just we go to these parties where everyone's like networking and trying to be cool and just look cool and we make fun of everybody Literally. for doing that. Like, why are you at a party and not being fucking fun? Like, people just, are so fucking funny. It in that literally, way. it actually drives me fucking insane. I'm like. Why are you here? Why yeah. don't you stay home? Like, like, if you were gonna stand around. It is so bewildering to me. And then I think the other thing, though, that we have to take into account is like, again, we are not people who drink a lot or like, yeah, we're not people who like are drinking casually like the average 22, 23 year old. Yeah. So all these people drink all the time. So they're standing <laughs> and they're just like lightly buzz and they're being normal. Dude. But me and Drew, when we go to a party, we do not go to a party because we're like, That'll be fun to go talk to people. No, we get drunk as shit because we're it's the purge. It's the purge. It's like the four month, five month purge. We just every four months we like black out. Like that's it. Yeah, you just get as drunk as you can, and then you go to parties and you take flash pictures of people you don't know who you make fun of behind doors, and then (laughs) the next morning you wake up and you find a two minute long video of y'all walking up to that person and flashing them <laughs> yeah literally. We're, the, we're the flashers we'd be flash banging people wait at no, let's get it straight we're not showing our tits and ass we're no, i'm showing my tits and ass when also at the when at, um at a party we had gone to i wore a button-up shirt that like notoriously unbuttons but i didn't think about that before going to a party in that shirt one time and I was like looking through my camera roll and I, my tits were just out. Like, but that's okay because I like- She's as a of, girl, reclaim them. As of this summer, I've decided that it's tits out summer. I'm tired of girls with D cups not being able to be sexy with their boobs out, but then like smaller cups getting to show their fucking nipples and it being chic. I'm like, no, big tits are chic. Take your fucking nipples out, girl. Yeah, let me see, let me, let me like, see nipples. Let me see your nipples. Come on. <laughs> I would like to see the shade of them so I know your origin. Let oh. me see your... <laughs> no one talks about that. The shade of your nipples says a lot. You do not need an Ancestry.com test. Yeah, just look at your I nipples. I need to see them nipples. <laughs> let me see the nipples right quick. Um, but yeah, also not anything against like smaller boobs. 
God, I want nothing more than to have small boobs. Literally, like, and yet oh for God. like the past like five years, all Inya has talked about, it's like a three month obsession once a year. Inya's like, I want a breast reduction so, so bad. bad. So like, bad. All the clothes I like, everything I love, like I just was not meant to have boobs. Like it just makes absolutely no sense with who I am for me to just like under all this silliness have fucking huge tits. Like that makes no sense. Like, I think it does make a lot of sense. <laughs> it's like the thing that I was like, why the weird girls in school always had big ass tits? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a post and it was like, we need to stop telling the sexy people they're sexy. Start telling the ugly people they're ugly. <laughs> Sorry, that was random, but. <laughs> it was that on Pontius. Yeah, I think so. Dude, it's so funny. But you know what really fucked my brain up is like, Growing up in Miami, all I wanted was to be thick and have huge tits and a huge ass. Like, that's all I fucking wanted growing up. And then as I got older, I was, like, introduced to, like, different body types. And I was like, oh, my God, actually, I enjoy my body type. But then my boobs grew way later in my life. Like, when I was, like, a senior in high school, I was, like, a B, like, almost C cup. And it wasn't that, that big of a deal. Like, so, like. I know what it means. Uh, I was like, fucking... damn, girl. I was like. <laughs> Virgin alert! <laughs> um, but no, I have a lot of sex. I need to make that clear. <laughs> I don't think you do. I bone. <laughs> Just Just I literally do. Um, but anyways, I like didn't have. I didn't start growing boobs until like late junior year, and then I graduated, and I could freely wear like shirts with no bra, except um, if you grew up in a Hispanic household. I'm sure you've met this, or just any like culturally cu cultured household not white house <laughs> yeah not white Girl, house just say what it actually, is actually i think even in white households like parents telling like girls to wear bras is such a thing um but like yeah no that is because dads are fucking creepy and sexualize their children Ooh. yeah literally because like parents are like i know what it's like to be sexualized or it's like i sexualize and i don't like i don't like this yeah um so <laughs> i don't like what i'm feeling right now <laughs> so scary so you get told to put a bra on and then also, like, I was just telling Drew this, like, one time when I was walking down Melrose, a homeless man looked straight at my boobs, and I was wearing a white t-shirt <laughs> with no bra on, and he just says, nice nipples, and then from that moment on, I swear on my life, I wore bras, because I was like, <laughs> that was the final straw. Um, but anyways, once I turned, like, 20, all of a sudden, my boobs started, like, inflating to C, and then recently, I found out I was a D, but I do think part of my body dysmorphia was convincing me I was a C for the past year. I knew you. When I... I've been a D. I always knew you were a D, just like the way like they felt and stuff. You have not felt my boobs in your life. Let me touch your boobs. <laughs> I've like played with Orion's boobs before, but you haven't let me play. You don't get yours. to touch because I have these like huge fucking mommy milkers. <gasps> <gasps> you just broke that fucking bracelet. It's what you get, bitch. I love this bracelet. Um, so I have gonna... mine still. I didn't break mine. Oh, is that the bracelet a follower gave us? And yeah. you just literally broke it while we were filming that? I love it. I've worn it every day since. It's so fucking cute. I know. But that's the reason I don't wear like handmade stuff like that. And I just keep it in my jewelry boxes because it will fucking break. Yeah. Especially your ass. You'd be touching it. I know. I'm like fiddling constantly. Get a fidget. Hey, don't do that to the fucking mic, bitch. <laughs> mic check, mic check. Um, But... Yeah, what was I saying? Basically, I don't want fucking tits. I'm over it. But I will say, here is my I want my tits. resolution is <laughs> my resolution what? is this summer I will have my tits out and see how I feel about them and if I love them. Um, and then if I don't, I'm gonna start heavily considering a breast reduction. But again, like the vaccine, I'm just too lazy. Like, <laughs> imagine actually having to do that. And yeah, it, that's hell. With my luck, they would like puncture my fucking heart and I'd die. With your luck, they'd like make them different sizes. <laughs> they make them bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we thought you wanted like to make them. Wait, we giant. thought you wanted an F cup. <laughs> we thought you wanted basketballs <laughs> yeah. there, volleyballs. Girl, um, imagine you woke up from a breast reduction with volleyball tits on your chest. That would be the last of me. And then y'all would have to publicly be like, she. <laughs> she did it. She ended it all because she woke up with huge tits. Again, also, like, when I talk about this stuff publicly, I feel bad because, like, for instance, my sister is a situation where, like, she needs a breast reduction and wants one for, like, health reasons because literally her back is about to break. Her boobs are way, way bigger than mine. And when I complain to her, she's always like... Shut up. Like, yeah, can you fuck off? <laughs> so I always feel bad complaining about it, but this is just my life. This is my Let life. Let me live. Listen this to me complain. 
that's why we have this. That's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the complaining podcast. This is just the hour of us complaining and just y'all having to Literally, listen. y'all listening to our untreated ADHD for an hour every day. You are really going in on touching, huh? <laughs> yeah. You can't stop moving. I know I can't. I don't know what it is. I think it's because I didn't have a Red Bull. I did like, order fi- uh, fidgets. Mm, I need a fidget really bad. I got, dude, that fidget was the best thing I've ever gotten. And it, it kind of makes me insecure because then I see how much I actually move around. I'm like, <laughs> and then when, Dude, I'm that's in, what I've been, when I'm in public around other people, like the 30 year olds, they're like, what is that? And I'm like, <laughs> it's my child toy. My attention toy. No, literally this entire podcast, I've just been sitting here like in my head, like I'm moving so much and I don't know why. It's not, I'm not even uncomfortable or like anxious. I literally am just moving and touching. I've been scratching my nose a lot this episode. Like I keep reaching to touch my nose and like my face. Yeah. But it's also because with my nails, I can like get scratch sensations that i usually can't so i'm just enjoying them Mm -hmm. um maybe it's because you need to hit your fucking puff bar you freak (laughs) you're itching for your puff bar that's what's happening um drew has an addiction to puff bar that's the name of this episode outing drew phillips drew phillips (laughs) vapes the thing is like what's so fucked up is like other influencers get to be like so and so drinks but no we already do everything we don't get the fun attention of being like so and so does this yep like when we smoked those cigarettes in that video what should have happened was news outlets reporting that enya and drew phillips (laughs) are smoking cigarettes and that they're they're nicotine addicts but no, not a single, no one even gave no a shit. No one cared. No one cared. No one cares about us. No one cares a, about us the way they should. And it hurts a mm. lot. No, I literally, my lungs are like filled with like just. Jizz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, my lungs are just filled with like popcorn. I'm at this point, I'm pretty sure like from the vape, like literally th- this is like like since i was 17 18. dude the way like not this is not something to brag about but the way we were on jewels when you had to order them online yeah we had to order jewel pods they did not sell them in stores the feeling a mango jewel pod like when i hit wes's jewel for the first time and it was like that mango jewel pod it legitimately changed no we we were smoking mint before mango. Yeah, it was mint. Mango, mango was dropped, and then that changed my life. Like, because I was, like, dabbling. I was, like, whatever. No, actually, I was in full blown. Whatever. I was going to say, but, you were, like, you were the reason I got a jewel. So I was, like, <laughs> these things look fun, except nicotine doesn't, doesn't work do it me. for me. It doesn't work on I've me. And I've tried. <laughs> yeah, literally, you have literally tried to actually, like, become a jewel fiend. But let me go back to the, like, the first time I hit a mango jewel pod, like, it was, like, a sexual awakening almost it was like a coming to god moment it was like the way that shit made me feel like is not normal like what are they fucking putting in those like that's not fair i never got that literally i just like got flavor oh so fucking good i like remember when we all used to be so onto jewels in high school um, like going on ebay and looking up rare jewel pods like dude even before that even before like things were rare when it was literally like we just had to get someone who was 21 to order them offline for us and we would just like order them online yeah. and just have jewel pods like this is like like 10th 11th like grade. you know the the displays that you see in the cabinet at like smoke shops of the jewel pods like you would we would order like a box of those at a time yeah you and could it, order a box of them and they were like relatively cheap yeah and like you could get an insane dude. Actually, app. no. Jewel in the beginning was expensive as fuck. Like a jewel like or starter the kit. Cartridge was like forty bucks. Yeah, they were like forty, and then they went down to twenty, and then they went back up to thirty, and then now they're literally like two dollars a cartridge. Like, bitch, I was buying mango jewel pods for like sixty five dollars. But we were also getting them in fucking bulk, like we were going to Costco. Yeah. Like you know how families go to Costco and get things in bulk. We were getting jewel pods in bulk. <laughs> Wait, something that like is not spoken about enough is how like in California you don't need. A subscription to go to Costco like you it, we need to look that up because I saw a TikTok about it but I think it might just be the um, the liquor store of Costco because uh, they want everybody to be an alcoholic um, so they all let you go do that and buy bulk alcohol uh, but I don't know if it's for the store itself but yeah I've I've tried to dabble me being like oh, I've tried my best like but I really did because I feel left out of the culture even though like thank God I'm not 
Drew just dropped a fucking bead, loud as shit. I doubt he even picked up. But um, even though, like, I know that's not something I want, like, necessarily, because if I was actually addicted to smoking puff bars and shit, I would fucking hate my life, as I've seen with everybody who's addicted to them. But I just want the public to know that I have tried. I've, I've even tried cigarettes. But it, nicotine just doesn't hit the part of my brain that, like, I don't know. It's, it just doesn't... It, I don't have that, like, feeling of, like, I need to do it. Like, I, like, I have, like, full addict brain. Like, I literally am, like... I can quit anytime I want. But, like, I do. Like, when yeah, I go, go back to Texas, I, like, quit for, like, two or three months. Like, it, it's just, like, every once in a while, I just need an escape. I need a vice. So, yeah. I, like, just, like... Because I, other than this puff bar, I have zero vices. Which, like, I think vices are sometimes healthy. Like, they're little outlets. Yeah. Um, and this is my vice. Um, and I just need to... Because if I wasn't smoking a puff bar, God knows what I'd be doing. Yeah. Some, sometimes you pick and choose your battles, especially yeah. if you like have addictive genes. Yeah. That's why part of me is like, I know like there's a lot of discourse, again, not to like condone smoking, but like there's so much discourse about like puff bars and shit. And I'm like, bro, do you know how like, it was so common for people to be cigarette smokers. Puff bar is just like the new cigarette. And like- It's just the history's repeating itself. 15 yeah. years from now, we'll find out everyone has cancer from them. Like. I am so interested to see what happens yeah, from like puff bars and stuff. I, I like the flavors. Some big of tobacco 2.0. The flavors is what's so funny. Like they straight up were like, fuck it. Jolly Rancher. <laughs> Something sweet for the kids. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so fucking sweet for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the, literally. <laughs> literally. Like, banana Laffy Taffy. Ew. Puff bar, Dude, creme ew. brulee. Do you remember that? That shit was rancid. <laughs> creme brulee jewel pods were that, fucking y'all rancid. Y'all literally get the nastiest flavors like for fun. And they'll pull up with like Coca-Cola, creme brulee, <laughs> banana. I remember when I was like 14 years old, like vape vapes were like just invented. Like the... the the, d- the not, big fucking yeah, the modular, box the mod. modular synth vape. <laughs> yeah, the literal box mod synth vaporizers with like cloud atlas in them, whatever. But um, I remember when those first dropped, I like wanted one so bad because I found out you could get like juice without nicotine in it. And I was like, I don't want nicotine. You like, were just one of those freaks who was like, I want to make clouds. I was like, I want to make big clouds and I want to learn tricks. And to this day, it's like riding a bike. You will, once you learn how to blow like smoke tricks and do smoke tricks, you never forget. It's like, it's something with your tongue. Like you just. Chill, girl. <laughs> yeah. Learning how to do vape tricks was really good for me when I was younger. Learning how to make polymer figures. What the fuck? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> Conolingus. <laughs> Remember on TikTok where there were some people who didn't know that word, so they were bleeping it out? Did you ever see that? <laughs> no. <laughs> TikTok. There was that one, like, what's her name? Ash Nico or Ashley Nico? Mm-hmm. Is that her name? Me and your girlfriend playing just up at your house. house. I don't know this. I and just it's like, know this. Song. I gave your girl kind of lingus, but they feel like it's some shit like that. She says kind of lingus, and people didn't know what that word <laughs> was, so they were bleeping it. It was just straight girls, like, bleeping it because they didn't literally. They never felt love <laughs> intimate love dude okay okay again not i don't why are we talking about vaginas I know, so much i, know, I know you're about to go off on some vaginas I, I am about to go off on some vagina shit because again i don't want this to be a place where we're like fucking having horny talk but this isn't even horny talk it's about it's, it's about female rights women's rights i am this is about women's rights and the fact that getting head is still for as a woman is still such a thing that men don't do they're like oh come on let me come <laughs> like, on like yo girl yo what <laughs> i was joking um because okay tmi but like i remember my first like intimate partner like I just never even expected that, and I was doing the damn deed and doing my business. <laughs> I was doing my part of the deal and getting absolutely nothing in return, and I did not second guess it for anything. And then as I got older, I was like, "Wait a damn Wait minute! Wait a second! That was an improper trade. <laughs> that was an improper trade of labor." I do my thing, you get me nothing. Yeah, that's the trade, and that's like the common thing. But yeah, that's that's my only take. I'm not I'm not going deep on that. Also, some motherfuckers just can't do it. So I guess if you can't do it, just don't even fucking try. <laughs> like, don't embarrass yourself and waste my time. Literally. Um, don't waste your time I'm on my you. vagina. <laughs> Shut up. That was a bar. I'm going to hit you in the fucking face. Well, um, 
Is that about it? I, is that it? I mean, we could talk about how I know for 1000% fact that I can cross the big red balls in Wipeout without a doubt. If they put them in front of me right now, <laughs> I would literally go so beast you mode. You just say you couldn't carry a gallon of milk and you think you're crossing those balls? I'm crossing those balls with <laughs> zero effort. Literally. Like I'm just running like a robot across. Like, <laughs> like literally that's all you have to do is just run across. Like these bitches have the wrong strategy when they dive onto it. Like, like, yeah, of course you're gonna fucking fly yeah, off. Like, bounce off your it's on simple a physics. Ball. It's literally like I have it all worked out in my brain. Like physics. Well, then apply to be on fucking wipeout. I don't think it's the hardest thing in the world. No, I'm literally gonna rent them for myself just to prove it to myself. I would love that because I would love to try. I'm. That's my next video. But like, literally, where that. are you gonna rent that? You're acting like it's that fucking <laughs> that sky zone. You have to like. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I figured everything out. No, you don't. You're I like, have nothing literally to yesterday, out. Drew was like, I want to see a building get demolished. I'm going to go do that. And I was like, what? Are you? Sometimes when Drew's in my passenger seat talking in the car, I genuinely feel like there's an automated like AI machine trying to make something to relate to me. Yeah. And then it's just missing because I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no, okay. I just want to see a building fall. It's poetic almost. It's like the destruction of humanity post capitalism like buildings falling it's beautiful and i that is have a literally every tiktok the post capitalist ramifications of the deep popification like yeah literally <laughs> but i just think seeing a building fall would hit a spot in me that needs to be hit yeah i, I get that because i was like it would be beautiful like that, literally that was like when we lived in 1304 and we like all had like a that very weird fantasy. unhealthy so basically no don't even talk about it okay, don't okay. it's bad it's bad <laughs> <laughs> like that's something that stays we with wanted me. to see buildings get like basically blown up but like again no one inside we just like it's it's just like wanting to see that kind of thing it's just like i want just see destruction that. and chaos like literally for the longest time i just wanted chaos and then i got chaos and i was like take it back Please, I can't do this. I want it anymore. You about my case, and you were like, "Wait, why does that sound fun? Why does that sound lit? <laughs> that sounds lit. I'm fucking stupid." Yeah. Um, All right. Well, should we just uh, dive into media? What we love oh. for the week? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm so down. I have to grab my phone. I that's my biggest habit is or, or my worst habit is I don't know names and stuff off the top of my head yeah I'm, like people will mention something to me and i'm like i don't know what that is and then they'll show the visual and i'm like oh no i love that mm. and then i sound like a liar yeah well i'll go first um last night i watched frank um and um, that is such a good movie it's about this dude who is a musical genius um and their band is locked in a cabin for a while and they make music together and it's really fucking good and all the while someone's documenting it um and it's just their journey making music and the climax of the movie is so cringy and hard to watch and it fucking sucks but like in a good way i didn't need and to then, watch that i was jealous of y'all yeah and then work. by the end it's a feel-good movie again you're like oh like all they needed was themselves um so watch frank um, it's really, really, really good. It's just buttercup cinema. Oh, Whoa. buttercup semen. Oh, <laughs> buttercup cinema. <laughs> Damn, buttercup cinema. cinema. That's what it is. Bruh. Um, and then buttercup cinema. And then uh, I've been going really hard on like existentialism and optimistic uh, nihilism. I think. You should read a couple books about that. I think you should grow up. I've been reading a lot about that. I've been struggling, struggling with my identity. Um, so go into that um, if you want to feel really bad about yourself um, and literally oh, never recover. Don't do it if you, yeah, don't do that. Um, and a song that I liked is from the movie Frank and it's I Love You All um, by the band in the movie. And it's really, really good. The all the like all the the best part about it is all the music is actually played in the movie by the people playing the music and sang by the people in the movie. And the songs are just so weird and genreless. And it's just like, why isn't this a real fucking thing? Like it's it's just is so it on pretty. Streaming services. Yeah, all it's on music? it's on Amazon for free. 
Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. So oh, wait, check the it out. movie? Yeah. Oh, I guess not free. It's it's free if you have Prime. Yeah, free if you have Prime. Um, but the song, but the songs are like five of the songs that they made are on uh, Spotify. That's awesome. Yeah, um, and well, that's my that's my media for the week. Boop, 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 boop. Drew's media of the week. Now on to mine. Um, I don't know that I don't have any like visual like. Actually, you know what? Dirty Girls. That was yeah. awesome. I was gonna say Dirty Girls and Batmobile were like yeah. really good. I was thinking about that earlier. So for like visual media like a little documentary it's like super short anyone can take it in it's dirty girls mm-hmm. um it's really interesting it's just about like young feminist like feminism in like the 90s and it's like these girls who are really inspired by like riot girls mm-hmm. um and it's just awesome like it's it's super interesting yeah and it's it's just kind of it's a really good lens into like 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 90s grunge almost and it's just like yeah. and it's also like crazy to see like how polar opposites like the culture was like riot girl feminism and then their bullies like the the, the what's, craziest what's, part was the bullying for i was me. gonna say yeah but what's even crazier is like i feel like that's super prevalent in like middle of america still and even in like popular places like i bet in those private schools in california that's still a thing yeah. for like all the like now like alt girls i i don't like that yeah whatever whatever that's a they get what you mean uh, but all like the alter- alternative like girls and just like people in general like i'm sure they still get bullied like that but it's a really good lens of like just human nature of like yeah. rejecting what feels foreign and like against what you were taught on yeah. and like and all the while the the girls that were being bullied the whole fucking time were right yeah also were, it's on youtube it's like 17 minutes long and it's free yeah so, so that's a literally go watch it dirty girls it's really fucking good and then for I have a book recommendation. Elisa, let me borrow this book. It's called Kitchen, and it's by Banana Yoshimoto, and it is so fucking good. I haven't finished it yet. I'm, like, halfway in, and it's just really good. It's, like, a heartwarming story about um, somebody who's struggling with the passing of their grandmother, Mm. Um, and it's super sweet. Yeah, it's just fucking awesome, and it feels really good to read. And then for music... um, Anything by the Dirty Column. Like, that is probably one of my favorite artists ever. And everything he... I don't know if it's actually just him. I'm assuming it's just him. But sometimes there's, like, a female's voice. And I know on one of the albums, it's, like, him and another woman. But anything by him, but especially the album The Return of the Dirty Column, like, so fucking good. One of my favorite songs in the world is Sketch for Summer by him. And Requiem Again is also so Sketch good. Sketch for Summer, Inya. Yeah. Such a good song. Like, I remember listening to that in 2019 and like- It's like traumatizing almost, like how good it is. Dude, yeah, it feels so good. It's just such a good feeling song. But yeah, that is my my media recommendations of the week. Also still Ariana Grande. I'm still on my Ariana Grande <laughs> Ari shit. shit. Nasty, listening to Nasty super loud on repeat has been my trauma response of almost diving back into depression for the past week. Yes. And that's the second episode, so. I hope you off. enjoyed. Uh, fuck you, leave. Bye. <laughs> All right, man. Bruh.